When the original Sonic Generations was leading up to release, I spoiled everything for myself. I couldn't wait to see what Zone was revealed next. I was so hyped for the game thinking that its gameplay would just be unleashed too that my mind ran wild. A teenager at the time, I'd come home from school and talk to people on Skype. Kinda shows you how old this is, huh? And I specifically remember seeing Seaside Hill and the Silver Boss fight in a trailer. Kind of odd to put those two together, but I remember Seaside Hill being unusually vertical in the image that I've never really been able to find since. Similarly, a few years later in the lead up to Mania, I looked at gameplay quite often just to see what zones would return to their 2D glory besides Green Hill and Chemical Plant Zone again. However, a little while before release, I stopped looking at things because I wanted to save some surprises for release. However, it may have been too little too late as I knew most of the returning zones anyway, and a friend of mine got the game early and proceeded to tell me anyway. So with the upcoming release of Shadow Generations, yes I'm just going to call it that, I've taken a different approach. After watching the initial announcement trailer, I've really tried to not look at any news at all. I was in the middle of watching another trailer once and I heard the soundtrack to the art from Shadow's game and I just shut it off. I was telling myself that there probably aren't going to be many zones in this game anyway, just like the original, so already knowing 3 would be very disappointing. However, this may not be the case. As of right now, all I know is Rail Canyon, Kingdom Valley, the music I heard of the art, and recently an email showing a gift for Final Chase. Of all zones, I did not expect Final Chase at all, and there will be serious work needed to be done on the art if it is in this game, because a majority of that zone were just flying on a black arms bird. The other two seemed kind of odd to me as I was expecting just more shadow centric levels from SA2 or his own game, but this really does open it up to more choice. I always had a feeling that the music unlocked via Red Rings in the original generations were tracks for zones that they were toying with the idea of doing, as we see Rail Canyon and Kingdom Valley here now. It also feels just like this more representation for the era, like when they chose Radical Highway for the 3DS game, for some reason when there were perfectly good other Sonic stages to use for that game, maybe more handheld zones. However, with that game being made in only 6 months, I still think that game is pretty good, besides all the random boxes in the way of your path for some reason in Emerald Coast Act 1. What this shows us, at least, is that this game is going to have much more variety than Sonic Story, which had two hill-like zones and four cities. Granted, the four cities differentiated themselves from each other very well, but nonetheless, they're still four cities. So I just wanted to make a little prediction video of what may show up in this game, and possibly in what order. Now, if we use the original game as a basis of what to expect in this one, we have nine zones spread across three eras, classic Dreamcast and modern, with two bosses for each and a final boss. Going by this, Shadow obviously wasn't in classic and only two thirds of Dreamcast, so I don't think they'll go that model. Besides that, we haven't seen a classic Shadow, we've already seen his other gameplay, whether or not that would be split between zones like how his game had a morality system, I'm not too sure. The gameplay honestly doesn't look as boost heavy as Sonic which could lead to some old school 3D design, as the Kingdom Valley gameplay has shown us. If anything, they'll have two halves of five, with some zones against Gun and Eggman, and the latter being Doom and Mephiles. I doubt Mephiles will be in the story, as Doom is the focus, even if his story was really good in 06, but if you want to cover all of his bosses, then he might be in there somewhere as a boss. Unless everyone wants to forget 06 happened, considering that game erased itself, despite Sonic Team keep reminding us of it. Although, I wonder if the zone layout will even be in the same vein as Sonic Generations. If they do, I could see the first third having just SA2 stuff, the second third having Heroes and Shadow, and the last being 06, but then looking at that, I doubt they'd have Shadow's own game have the least representation. I do kind of see them highlighting the Shadow game with its own three zone segment in the middle, if they do go the original model. But then the choices of zones to choose from will be SA2 and Hero stuffed into one and Shadow and 06 get in their own slot as I really don't see anything after 06 being represented here. So let's try the original format first. If they are to bring back Radical Highway again, I think it would make sense to be his first stage. But honestly, if they're going with Time Distortion route again, having Westopolis as the starting zone would be so iconic. It's already had a musical rendition in Sonic Forces, and it gets memed on so often by the community just for how much you can play it, even to see the end of Shadow's game, let alone the 326 storylines. I've seen the YouTube comments, everybody wants it back. 
if this game actually has any semblance of a story and pacing and doesn't just give up after the second zone like they do in the original Sonic Generations, I feel like having Radical Highway next would flow well. Even if it is another similar looking city, it may even incorporate some level gimmicks from Lethal Highway, just to even it out. But it's also one of the only well-known shadow-centric zones from this era anyway. Next would be White Jungle. I'm not 100% behind this choice, but I feel like what we have seen so far will come later in the game, and I don't think they're going to choose Skyro as it's too short and gimmicky for a modern Sonic approach to work, but White Jungle could work a lot as a visual breather. The bosses for these three would be a rendition of all the gun armor, like Hotshot, but modernized to fit with the new gameplay style, and then a boss against a bio lizard, which we have already seen before on the 3DS, and then what we've seen so far in the trailers. For the start of the next set, I think they'll go with Rail Canyon. I always thought Rail Canyon was a turning point in Sonic Heroes where the game starts to get more difficult, and it seems like the perfect place to start the next third. If Westopolis isn't the first stage, and Radical Highway is on its own, then you can place that here. Next, it will be the art. A perfect middle point to bridge the game from old to new, as that zone was one of the most unique in the Shadow game, and I feel like it would work here, being an actual space zone, but what they could do is put all of the different parts of the art theme zones together, either from all the games so far, or just Shadow's game. Lava Shelter would work here, keeping the theming of the zones together as it focuses on Eggman and for more variety. I also think the main Shadow game needs to have more rep than the others, for obvious reasons. If not that, then Sky Troops would be a good choice as well, as I feel like that's a well known zone for the game. I feel like the bosses here are weird. I'd say it would be another version of Sonic vs Shadow and Egg Emperor, but they did that already. However, that did not stop them with the Bionis. I could see Metal Madness ripping Sonic Heroes, as that would be a unique choice and fit with the theming of the original game too, but there'd need to be work done to it like with Chaos in the original generations to make it work. Next we have Kingdom Valley. A perfect intro into the last set of zones with a bump in difficulty and also a change of scenery. Just for the sake of giving Shadow's game more representation, I feel like it needs another zone, but a more difficult one. However, White Acropolis from Sonic 06 seems like the only thing I can put here that even makes sense. More zone variety, but it's also a zone closely associated with him in Sonic 06. The final zone would be Final Chase. If for no other reason than ending the game in space. Hey! If 007 Legends can have all of their movies be in order to put Moonraker at the end just to have a battle in space, then why can't we? Having anything called Final not be at the end just seems weird, unless it's a very obvious segmented half, which I'll explain later. The bosses would be Mephilus and Black Boom, although, again, they'd kinda need to be changed, but I feel confident in these choices, with the final boss being a new version of Devil Doom. If they're to do the two halves of five format I spoke about, then Westopolis, Radical Highway, Rail Canyon, ER, and Final Chase, with bosses of Hotshot, Egg Albatross, and Violets. For the next, they'd have Sky Troops, Black Comet, Lava Shelter, White Acropolis, and Kingdom Valley, with bosses being Black Bull, Mephilis, and Black Doom, with the final boss being a new rendition of Doom's Eye mixed with Devil Doom. If we're going to do it in new types of areas specifically, then we have Radical Highway, White Jungle and Final Chase, with bosses being Hotshot and Bio Lizard. Then we have Rail Canyon, Westopolis and the Ark, with the bosses being Sonic and Metal Madness. And then we have Wave Ocean, White Acropolis and Kingdom Valley, with bosses being Mephilus and Black Doom, and then the final boss being Devil Doom. I feel like sounds like Central City would be good, but it would need reworking as there was beta footage I saw years ago where the stage had a goal ring, but it's the only stage in the Shadow game that doesn't. It very much is a point of no return. A zone like the Doom or Aquatic Base would need serious rework to fit in here as they're both pretty vertically based, but I feel like thematically they would work. I was somewhat disappointed with the original game. It didn't seem very fast in the way that Unleashed did and just seemed to imitate fast speed as opposed to actually being fast and felt cheaper than Unleashed 2. However, the way the game ended up being wasn't purely boost focused like games prior and as I mentioned, I spoiled it all for myself anyway. Also, despite playing one handed at the time due to injury, I also found it very short and easy till Planet Wisp and the final boss, which even now I've managed to find some enjoyment in Planet Wisp, but the final boss is still a train wreck and perfectly encapsulates 2000's era of Sonic more than anything else ever could. If anything, this game shows us that they have more budget than they did last time 
As from what we have seen so far, every zone chosen has a different variety than the original game with completely new assets, and the choices surprised me. Seeing new gameplay of this type is such a treat. Some of the space zones don't look as good as they did in prior games, and the way Shadow runs never really felt as smooth as before, but I'm very much looking forward to this. Now if only they had one version that had all of the bonuses. The original Sonic Generations was pretty easy in seeing what zones they'd choose, as it was basically the most popular ones from each game, or the first zone. Planet Risk was done dirty though. When making this video, I thought it would be easy to choose what would go where, and I just wanted to talk about it and have some fun. But the longer I've thought about it, the more I feel way off especially because of the zone variety, and because I haven't been keeping up with the game on purpose, for the sake of a surprise. But I really doubt that PC players will get an option of just a Shadow DLC, I know it will be a new game for them. I usually feel like I'm pretty good at predicting things like political elections, game awards, the Oscars, things like that, but after I saw Sonic Heroes 06 showing up in this trailer, I had no idea. If it were just a Shadow level showing up again, I think it would be pretty easy. Things like Radical Highway, White Jungle, Final Chase, Westopolis, Prison Island, Sky Troops, Death Ruins, The Ark, Gun Fortress, Black Comet, Final Hawk, things like that. Who knows, things may have multiple acts, it's all up in the air, especially with the new open world styled off the frontiers that was shown in the initial email I got about it. There may be hub worlds that house multiple zones that have themes like urban, Eggman and space. Or maybe because it is just Shadow they may have two acts per theme because of his new powers. Whatever they are. Hell, we may get Shadow and Frog Forest yet. I would like to think that there would be more content in a game that was released 13 years after the original, which only took 6 hours to finish on the first run through with one hand, but I don't know if they'd want to upstage the original Sonic Generation so much unless they add more to that game, or have Sonic and Shadow playable in each other's zones, since they mostly play the same. Lord knows about classic Sonic. He was on the right track in forces, but he didn't really need to be there, and he barely had any zones. Either way, Speaking of upstaging, it can't be any worse than the Colors Ultimate launch, can it? A lot of this video is wishful thinking, and having totally unique zones for every zone would be a lot for the budget, even if it's how an original game would work, but they've already shown a lot of variety, so I remain hopeful. Anyway, I'm very much looking forward to it, and I just thought I'd have some fun making a video talking about it. And if the Chow on the cover are a hint that Chow Garden is in this game, well then I'll play it forever. And maybe we'll see Shadow react to a bad ranking too, like Sonic does. And you know what? I'll probably be spoiled after making this now.